All right, welcome everybody. In this video, we will continue working with expected value and variance of random variables. And to motivate our investigation, we will continue working with the raffle examples that we worked on in class. And so a link um, to this CoLab notebook, you can find in the description of this video. And once you open this notebook, if you want to go to the full um, notebook that we worked on in class, you can click on the open in CoLab link here to go to the full course materials. Um, and so the two examples that we were considering, the two different raffles were, let's consider um, the first raffle where you sell 1,000 tickets and um, you've got a grand prize, one out of the 1,000 tickets wins $5,000. Um, there are two that win a $1,000 prize. There are 10 tickets that win $200 and all the rest, the remaining 987 tickets, they do not win any money. And so we set up a probability mass function to represent um, the random variable X, which is the amount of money won by a randomly selected ticket. And we considered a second example from another raffle where you have 1,000 tickets. And in this raffle, half of them win a grand prize, which is just $15, and the other half do not win any prize. Um, so we compared these two different raffles, and we compared properties such as the expected value and the variance for both of these raffles. And so in raffle X, the expected value for a ticket we determined was $9 and the variance of the winnings for a ticket in that raffle were, were very large. So it was like 27,319. And here we've got a summary for the expected value and the variance for the other raffle Y. There was a smaller expected value. The grand prize wasn't all that big but your odds of winning some money were a lot better. And so the variance in that second raffle was much, much smaller. Um, and here are some R code cells. This is not the, the point of this video here, but if you wanna check these calculations, um, I've entered in the probability mass functions in the first code cell. Um, in the second code cell, I'm just verifying the expected value. In the third code cell, I'm verifying the variance using the definition of the variance. And finally, down here um, is the second way that we could calculate the variance using um, the result that the variance can be calculated by computing the expected value of the random variable squared minus the squared of the expected value. Okay, so now we pick up with where we left off in question five from that worksheet. And so Let's consider both of these raffles at the same time. If you were to get a ticket for raffle X and a ticket for raffle Y, um, would your winnings in each of these raffles be independent from each other? So in other words, are random variables X and Y independent random variables? And in this case, um, these two random variables, it makes sense to suspect that these would be independent random variables since each of these raffle winners are picked independent of each other. So raffle X, picks a winning ticket, raffle Y picks a winning ticket, and these are totally separate processes. So whatever the winning ticket is in raffle X, that has no effect on the outcome of what raffle Y would be. So here we're gonna be thinking about random variable X and Y, and these are two independent random variables. Okay, in question 5B, we now consider if we had three tickets from raffle X and two tickets from raffle Y, how much would we expect to win um, from all five of these tickets together? And um, so we can use the information that we determined from each of these two raffles. So namely in raffle X, we already determined that the expected value of a ticket was $9. So each ticket that we get, we can expect to win about $9. So if we have three tickets from that lottery, each of them we expect to win $9 that's gonna give us uh, an expected value of $27 for the three tickets in raffle X. For the two tickets in raffle Y, each of those tickets in raffle Y, we expect to win $7.50. So for two tickets, we would expect to win twice that much, $15. So altogether from the three tickets in raffle X, two tickets in raffle Y, we would expect to win 
27 plus 15 equals $42. In question 5C, we ask about the variance of your winnings if you were to have three tickets from raffle X and two tickets from raffle Y. How much variability is there in the amount of winnings that we can expect? Um, and so for the three raffle tickets in raffle X, we want to calculate the variance of 3x. And so using the definition of variance, that would be the expected value of 3x minus the mean of 3x, which we just calculated in, in 5b to be three times the expected value of x. Uh, and I want to take the difference of that and square and look at the expected value. So what I can do is pull out uh, three from each of the x and the mu x that is inside the squared expression inside of the expected value. And then when I factor out that three from both of those terms and pull it out from the squared, that three also needs to be squared. So I get the expected value of the quantity three squared times x minus mu x squared. And now I am can pull that nine, that three squared out from the expected value, just like we saw in the previous example in 5b, we can pull the a constant out from inside of an expected value. So now we can calculate nine times the expected value of x minus mu x squared, and that is exactly the variance of x. So to calculate the variance of three x, I can calculate the variance of x and then multiply that by three squared, multiply that by nine in this case. So nine times the variance of x, that gives us 245,871. And we can do a similar calculation for the variance for raffle y. Um, if we have two tickets from that raffle, we wanna calculate the variance of two times y. And the math works exactly the same as in the case for x. We can pull out that 2, but when we pull that 2 out, we need to square. So that 2, the variance of 2y is equal to 2 squared times the variance of y. So that's where that 4 comes from. Uh, and then we take 4 times the variance of y, which was 56.25. And that gives us overall uh, the variance of 2y is 225. So then we can combine this information. Um, since X and Y are random variables, uh, a reasonable conjecture, we certainly haven't proven that, this, that we can do this, but it seems reasonable to think that the variance of these three tickets in raffle X and these two tickets in raffle Y, um, we can calculate this by thinking about the variance for the three tickets in X separate, from the variance of the two tickets in raffle Y and then add those variances together. And if we take that approach, um, what we get is a, a total variance for these three tickets in raffle X and two tickets in raffle Y of 246,096. We've taken more of an intuitive approach just in the context of these two raffles that are independent from each other. And to prove this more thoroughly, we would need to have some more exposure to joint distributions. So I want to just point out, um, if you're curious about where these conjectures came from and how to prove them more formally, um, you can check out the link to um, materials on joint distributions that we are not going to cover in class. And below is a link to another video that goes into more of the theory of developing these properties. And so instead, since we haven't talked about joint distributions, I'm just going to check these conjectures with some code um, down below. So here um, we're loading in the probability mass functions for X and Y. Um, we're calculating something that's called the joint probability mass function and calculating the variance and expected value um, based on our conjectures above. And one thing that's really important to point out in this code, if, if you're curious about running it, is that there's this step here, which is going to allow us to calculate um, the joint probability mass function by just multiplying the probability mass of x and the probability mass uh, for y. And this in general is not going to, uh, we can't do, but we can do in the case 
such as the raffle tickets where the random variables X and Y are independent. So I'm gonna run the code below um, and we can check that this matches our answer that we got in part B for the expected value of the, those combination of tickets. And this matches the variance that we got using those conjectures um, about the variance of the combination of those um, raffle tickets. So I wanna summarize those properties um, down below. So with the expected value, when we looked at having three raffle tickets for raffle X and two from raffle Y, we were using this property that the expected value of AX plus BY is equal to A times the expected value of X plus B times the expected value of Y. So this is like a linear property. We can break up linear combinations of random variables. And this is true regardless of whether random variable X and Y are independent or dependent. So this is a property that applies for any two random variables X and Y. And um, an, a bullet here that we didn't talk about is that the expected value of a constant is equal to that constant. So if you had a raffle where you get a ticket and everybody in that raffle wins $10, then the expected value that you would expect to win would be $10. For the variance, the properties um, are a little bit more complicated, but um, what we did show with the raffle example is that if the two random variables X and Y are independent, then the variance of AX plus BY does equal A squared times the variance of X plus B squared times the variance of Y. So that held in the case when X and Y were independent random variables. In the next question, we're gonna consider what happens when random variables X and Y might not be independent. And so we're gonna leave the raffle example behind and let's consider a different set of data. Um, so we've worked with this data set called hits before in class, um, but this is a data set that contains a whole bunch of information about Spotify songs, um, so this first code cell is just loading that data set into this R session. Um, this code cell is just going to create, um, convert some of the variables in that data set to factors. So they're categorical. And then we're just going to get a printout of the first, say, six rows of data in um, our resulting data set called hits. So it just has information about the artist, the song, and a couple of numeric variables, energy and acousticness. And so the energy is a measure of how energetic a song is. And this is a measurement from zero to one. The acousticness is a measure also from zero to one going from least to most acoustic. And just for the sake of thinking about combinations of random variables, let's imagine we wanted to assign uh, some score to each song, which was a weighted mean of these two uh, numeric variables, the energy and the acousticness. So we're gonna multiply the energy by three, add to that twice the acousticness and then divide by five. So we're getting this weighted average between energy and acousticness. Okay, so now we consider for any song in this data set, X is the energy of that song, Y is the acousticness of that song. Do we think that X and Y are independent variables from each other, Y or Y not? So here again, X is the energy and Y is the acousticness. And in this case, when it comes to music, it's probably not a reasonable assumption to, to think that these two random variables are gonna be independent since whether or not a song is acoustic would affect how much energy the song has. Um, acoustic songs typically tend to have less energy overall. So in this case, X and Y are not independent random variables, at least that doesn't seem like a likely assumption, but we do wanna think about what's gonna be the expected value and the variance for this linear combination of those two random variables. So question 6B is asking us to check the expected value property that when we take a linear combination of random, of random variable X and Y, so I have AX plus BY, uh, the expected value is A times the expected value of X plus B times the expected value of Y. And in this case, our random variable X is the energy, Y is the acousticness. Uh, these don't seem to be independent from each other. 
And now we've defined a new random variable Z, which is this weighted mean between the energy and acousticness of a song. So we're gonna check this conjecture. Does it work when X and Y are not random variables? So in this first code cell, um, I'm just extracting the energy uh, into something we're calling X. I'm extracting the acousticness from something we're calling Y. And now we're gonna calculate for each song some uh, value Z, which is this weighted mean, three times its energy plus two times the acousticness of that song all divided by five. So this just creates those three random variables. And now the second code cell, we're gonna calculate the mean of X, the mean of Y, the mean of Z, and then we're gonna see if calculating the mean of Z, we could have instead taken three fifths times the mean of X plus two fifths times the mean of Y. And running this code cell and checking the output, we can see that the last two outputs corresponding to calculating the mean of Z or using this property that we could use information about X and Y to calculate the mean of Z, um, we see we get the same result. So this property, um, the linearness of the expected value that holds in general, regardless of whether random variables X and Y are independent or not. In question 6C, let's check the variance property, namely that when we want to calculate the variance of AX plus BY, can we use this property that that's going to equal A squared times the variance of X plus B squared times the variance of Y, even if random variables X and Y are not independent from each other. So this did work when they were independent random variables um, in the code cell below. We're going to calculate the variance of Z directly, and then we're going to compare that to this conjecture that what if we just took three-fifths, uh, squared it, times the variance of X, and we took two-fifths and squared it and multiplied by the variance of Y. So if we use this property in a case when the random variables are not independent, you can see we are getting a different result. So if X and Y are not independent random variables, then it is not necessarily true that we can use this property. It certainly does hold, however, when we know that random variables X and Y are independent. So just be careful with the expected value, that property held regardless of whether random variables X and Y were independent or not. When it comes to the variance, we can only use this property if we know that X and Y are independent random variables.